What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Four Strategy Gaming and another commentary. Uh, at long last, it's been, uh, I don't know, it's been a few days. It's been a while since the last commentary. Uh, as I'm sure you know, if you follow this channel at all, then you'll know that I went on vacation uh, last week for about, well, I think it was four or five days or so. Don't really remember. But yeah, I went on vacation to Las Vegas, and as such, the content here for the channel wasn't quite as much as I would typically like it to be. Uh, so yeah, it's been a while since the last commentary, but let's start things off here with a match between Imba's Straylock and Mouse's Morrow. We can see Morrow here spawning in the bottom left position of Zelnaga Caverns and in the upper right we do have Straylock as the blue Terran player. So yes, it will be a TVZ starting things off here on Zelnaga. Uh, very, very cool, very loving. What am I talking about? You can see, you can tell when it's been a while since I've done a commentary because I just, I just say random stuff. Did I just say it's very loving? <laughs> That, that is weird. Yes, it is. So anyways, yes, uh, going to be the TVZ here on Zelnaga. We can see a whole bunch of chitter chatter going between the two players. A stray lock. Let's see if he's going to be opening up with pretty standard fare. Yes, it looks like he will be. Uh, interested to see the fact that he is, in fact, placing his initial barracks all the way back here. If, for some very odd reason, Morrow had opened up with a six pool, this actually would have kind of sucked for Straylock. But you know what? We do not see six pools ever on high level play. It just doesn't happen. I'm telling you, I cannot think of the last. The last time I saw a six pool was Idra in, uh, I don't remember. It was one of the big tournaments. I think it was Idra versus MC was the last time I saw a six pool. But that, uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it just doesn't really happen all that often. It is not standard fare whatsoever. So Straylock should be fine unless Morrow came out with super crazy early aggressive Zerglings um, than just using these Marines and dropping maybe his second barracks over here to defend the front or maybe even his factories will be dropped over here to defend his front. But just the Marines and an SCV will be more than enough to defend any likely aggression from Morrow. In fact, I really don't expect much aggression from Morrow. Looks like he will be doing pretty standard opener, so I'm going to expect two to four Zerglings to start off with and then Morrow will be moving out to expand. You can see actually Actually pulling guys off of his Vespian right now. He uh, will be, of course, getting those extra resources to get up his expansion that much quicker, and he doesn't really need Vespian at this point because he did save that first 100 for that metabolic boost. As we can see right now, Straylock moving out with his SCV scout, moving right on in tomorrow's base. He will actually be getting hit by those initial Zerglings and losing the SCV because those four Zerglings overwhelmed him. That first queen coming out, and here comes that expansion. Let's see a drone come. There it is. Drone moving out for that expansion, and look at that. As, as I figured it would be the case, going with a very standard opener. Now, very interested to see these three supply depots at the front. Straylock does not want Morrow to know what he's doing a lot of times. If that barracks or factory is up here in the front, then your opponent can figure out what you're doing based on the production building and the attachment. And as we can see, Straylock deciding to go with that reactor factory, that hot swap will be taking place once this factory and reactor finish. That is, again, what he wanted to hide. He did not want Marl to know precisely what he was doing. So very, very intrigued uh, by that decision there from Straylock. Uh, certainly going to work out well for him, I would assume. We can see that starport coming out. So opening up with that 1-1-1 one, one, one build will We'll be very interested to see what he decides to transition to. The likely thing is going to be either opening up with a medevac or a viking. However, opening banshee play is quite possible as well. Now, something to realize though, Maro is obviously aware of the fact that something funky is going on. He's also aware of the fact that Straylock is trying to hide what he's doing. So Maro, I'm expecting him to move out with that Overlord and try to get inside of the main as fast as possible because he does need to check those production buildings and he does need to see what the attachments are. Back over here, we can see a second Vespian Geyser has been placed down for Morrow. He does have them both saturated right now as well. Not, not a third Vespian here at the expansion quite as of yet. But let's take a look over there. There we go. Hellions have been spotted right now. Straylock moving out with those first four. And it looks like a Banshee play will be the uh, transition there. Again, as mentioned, the, the more standard opener will be either a quick Viking for Overlord sniping or a Medivac for some sort of drop harass. But opening up with the Cloak Banshees, he will be trying to do tons of damage early game. Hellions not having a target right now will be forced to try to engage that queen obviously not their best or their number one choice rather 
Uh, he can do damage to it, but it takes quite some time to actually whittle down the Armored Queen, as it were. Back over here, as you can see, obviously nothing mining at the expansion. Those Hellions going to continue to dance around and try to do damage to whatever they can get their hands on, basically. Any stray Zerglings are being able to pick off the health just a little bit from those Queens is precisely what Sherlock is trying to do. Transition far out of the reach of Straylock right now. He is just going to be continuing up this aggression. We do have some Banelings morphing in, but I don't know how well that's going to work with some proper micro. Straylock should have no problem. Now, one queen has been taken down. Those Banelings should be a no problem at all for those Hellions. And there we go. And now there are six Hellions, in fact, two joining. I think that Hellion got damaged a little bit uh, by that one Baneling popping, but not enough to actually finish it off. And here we go, just continuing up the aggression. And the first Banshee sitting actually over here for Straylock. So Straylock has not grabbed it yet to actually engage. There we go, finally grabbing that Banshee, moving it down to engage. His Cloak Research just about finished. Second Banshee moving out here as well. Straylock denying the mining at this expansion and this is a big problem. Now Morrow as we can see has made that transition into Roaches. We'll be using those Roaches to deal with the Hellions but they cannot handle the Banshee Cloak being dropped right now. No layer tech for Morrow. He does not have an Evolution Chamber either. He is going to have a hard time dealing with these Cloak Banshees. Now the Roach Push should in all honesty move out for a counter attack. That is precisely what Morrow wants to do and it looks like that is what he is planning. Now we do have a bunker being placed down right now for Straylock for what few Marines he has. Um, some more more Hellions moving in to join the fray as well will be used to try to drop any of those Banelings or any remaining Zerglings. Again, those Roaches not the best target. He can try to micro and stay out of the range of those Roaches as much as possible. Just do a little bit of damage, but it takes them so long to whittle away any of those armored units. Again, here we go. The Banshee sitting with one kill right now is actually target firing down that Evolution Chamber to try to stop that from going up to prevent any Spore Crawlers from coming in. And here we go. Being able to pick off those Banelings before they pushed in and Morrow calling the GG, realizing he cannot win this game. We saw Straylock open up this game with three depots at the front of his main base, preventing his opponent from being able to scout out the production buildings and attachments, which is what allowed Straylock to su surprise Morrow with some early game Hellions. Morrow opened up a very standard with a pool extractor into expansion early game just sitting with a few zerglings but without being able to scout his opponent he did not expect these early game hellions as you can see forced to pull those drones off the line and not taking advantage of that expansion definitely hurt him quite a bit economically early on in the game. In response to the Hellion Harass, we saw Morrow come out with a roach warrant to pump out some roaches to take care of the damage that they were doing. However, Straylock had transitioned into Cloaked Banshees, which was way more than Morrow could handle at that point in the game without an Evolution Chamber and without a layer. Morrow did the proper thing in pushing out with a counterattack. However, as we can see here, the Hellions roasting off any Zerglings and Banelings that Morrow pushed out with made it that much more difficult to Morrow, for Morrow to push into the main base. That plus a bunker with some proper defense, Straylock was easily able to handle this counter push and as such forced the GG. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the content here, please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And as always guys, keep watching and keep owning.